Multicast is a technique where a multicast server can send a single packet stream out and then routers on our network will perform packet multiplication. That way, if I have multiple receivers, and in the example on the slide, we've got eight receivers, it's a single packet from the server that gets split by the router to go to all eight receivers. This way, in a traditional unicast, we would have a packet from the server for every receiver, and that can cause a lot of congestion in the network, a lot of overhead on that multicast server, and it's not as efficient as we could be. Now, as we're looking at the traffic that's being sent, let's just look at unicast versus multicast. With unicast, there is a packet sent from that host for every receiver. You can see at different points on our network, we have a lot of packets on each of these wires. Whereas with multicast, we can send out a single packet from the host, and each router, if that packet is needed on a segment, can split that packet, can replicate that packet, and send the same packet out both interfaces. That way we never have more than one packet on any segment for the packet that was sent from the host. This is going to reduce congestion on the network, get rid of delay, and it really works well for real-time applications that have multiple receivers. So how does IP multicast work? Well, one single copy of the frame is sent out from the source. Now, we're typically talking about a stream, so multiple packets are gonna be sent out, such as video or audio. Now, on the network are receivers. That packet does not need to go to all of the receivers that are all clients that are on the network. So if a client wants to be a receiver, it'll send a message into the network saying, hey, I need to receive this multicast stream. And typically what we're doing is just using the multicast address. Send a packet out to the address to let the network know that that address is needed on your segment. This host that's on the bottom did not need that segment. So as the source is sending that packet stream out, it's splitting that stream so that it goes to both routers from this first router and then to both of these routers these routers had registered, they had hosts that wanted to receive that stream, but this router down here that does not have any hosts that need to register for that stream of data, it doesn't need to receive that stream of data. So our source is only sending out one packet to the network. The routers copy that packet out to parts of the network that need it, and then only hosts that need that packet are gonna to have to receive that packet. So very, very efficient when we're looking at multicast versus unicast. So multicast advantages, if we're looking at audio streaming, all clients listening to the same 8K audio, if we're doing multicast, then the amount of traffic that has to be sent on any one segment stays at 8K. But if we're doing unicast, Unicast requires a one-to-one -one. for every client we need another packet on that segment. So we're going to end up with multiple, especially at the source host. That source host has to send out a packet for every client that needs to receive that stream. So if you take that 8K and you start going up to 40 clients or more, you're going up into quite a bit of traffic compared to multicast just having to send out the 8K. Now, multicast applications. For IP multicast, you can have live TV and radio broadcast to the desktop. A CEO of a company can send out a corporate broadcast. We can use it for video conferencing, such as WebEx or other types of live services with audio and video whiteboard and collaboration, or even video on demand can use multicast so that you can play a stream that you want to see, but that stream only has to be sent to your area one time. So lots of uses 
for multicast in our enterprise networks. Now what we have is an IP multicast group address and this is only ever going to be a destination address. It will never be a source address. The receivers, they're going to register to that address and the source will send traffic out to that address. That destination address is going to be a class D IP address. Class D IP addresses start at 224.0.0.0 and go through 239.255.255.255. So when we're looking at these, we do have them scoped so that we have three basic uses for those different ranges of addresses. There's a local scope 224.0.0.0 through 224.0.0.255 was reserved by the IANA for network protocol use for things like OSPF, EIGRP. And in that range, we've got addresses like 224.0.0.1 that would represent all hosts, dot two, all IPv4 routers, dot 13, all PIM v2. So with PIM, that's a multicast mode, and that's for uh, multicast messaging. Now, 224.0.0.5.6.9 and .10, those are used by unicast routing protocols such as OSPF. Now, in addition to that local scope, we also have a global scope, which is going to start at 224.0.1 and go through 238.255.255.255, and those are allocated dynamically through the internet. And then inside private domains, we have 239.0.0.0 through 239.255.255.255. Now our IP multicast service model, we have a sender, we have routers, and we have receivers. The sender will send traffic out to the multicast address. The routers are going to see that multicast traffic and they're going to be able to copy that traffic off to any segment on the network that needs that traffic. And receivers, what they're going to do is they're going to register with the routers. They're going to express interest in traffic. So they're going to send a different message than sending just a packet. They're going to send a message to that multicast address saying, I want this address to be sent to me so that the router knows where the receivers are in the network. Now, when we look at our distribution tree, the idea here is that the source is going to send that stream, that packet stream, out onto its local segment. And that first top router will be the first router that receives that stream of packets. The last top router is the router that our receiver actually registers with. So that's going to be the router that forwards the packet out to the receiver. 